Hi, this is Craig Lane with Video Blog Week 40, part of the Health Alchemy team, H-E-A-L-T-H-A-L-K-E-M-Y, healthalchemy.com. We are using more and more tools to help people contact and connect with me, um, no matter where you are in the world, United States, and so forth. Um, this week's Video Blog Week 40 is going to be about how to sit with a craving or an impulse and not act. One of the things about compulsions and impulses is that we tend to act before actually a couple of the exercises that I have clients do and I practice myself for many years is looking at what's going to happen in the future and even having a relationship with that person. So one of my examples um, has been with um, the use of overeating with sugar, um, flirtations, and sexual sort of innuendos, um, getting and marijuana and pot. So not that they were necessarily addictions, but they were and have been compulsions. So, and one of them that, especially with marijuana, is that it's so fun is it ended up um, having a hard day's work and then having an experience with marijuana in the evening. And then um, I started remembering an old exercise I had from a book called Mystical Experiences in 30 Days. And it was basically, if you're driving on a trip, and as you drive south on, say, the freeway, I was driving south on Highway 101 towards San Luis Obispo, um, I imagined myself driving home in three days. And I journaled about what that experience was like. And so there's a relationship between the, the present self and the future self, in other words. So mine was... What's going to happen um, to this future self? And what does this future self have to say? So I'm calling it night guy versus morning guy. You know, there's there's a night guy. He wants to have a good time. But then morning guy wakes up and he's kind of pissed off at night guy because then that's present self talking to past self, right? Um, so sitting with what these two beings as part of myself say and having them have a direct and loving relationship versus I'm going to fuck him over unconsciously and then have to deal with that in the morning and all the residue of that. So a um, couple of the things that sitting with cravings is um, not acting. And really for me, it's just been a matter of just sitting with it, sitting and what's going on in my head, what's going on in my heart. Because the heart and mind, if you think about the Heart and Math Institute and the heart and mind and what they've been able to put together, then we start to say, wow, um, there's a whole intelligence down here, how we, when we think through our feelings, we think through our heart. And then there's, what does my gut say? Even as much as like, what does my future self say about this? What's going to happen if I act on this? And is it in my best interest? So what can cravings be? You know, they can be for a lot of things like, you know, we might be craving something that we, we know is bad for us. And we know, we all know what these are. And I don't have to go into it. Um, but it's when that question kind of pops up, like, Oh, this may not be in my best interest. Like for me, sometimes um, getting caught in competitive and traffic has been one of my fun ones. And then just before acting of um, trying to race somebody or, close them off when they're trying to pass me on the right, for example, and when I'm in the fast lane, someone veers around me to the right because they're trying to get one car length ahead, which used to be a huge pet peeve of mine. It's like, really? Is it really that important to get one car length ahead when you know there's like kind of smushed in traffic already? So it's just not acting and it's just letting, is it really in my best interest to get all riled up inside about what someone else is doing or um, acting on something like that or is it really in my best interest to act on the impulse of judging even someone else? Like what I would deem is they're doing something stupid. Um, so there's a whole litany of things here that kind of go through us. And so the question that often the inquiry is sort of like, well, what is this? You know, and really, you know, how kids, they're like, they're just genuinely curious, you know, and it's just this genuine uncontrived curiosity that the child has like wow what's that 
like right now I'm looking at this camera and there's a little red button that says stop recording on my YouTube channel and there's a little green light going up and down it's like wow what is that and so when these cravings or compulsions arise it's just sitting with it and um, I have a I believe I have a video or a story from Mark David he's a nutritional counselor and um, really a man I deeply respect and he had a story about how he sat with something I think for two or three hours he sat with this craving and to me that's that's high level being right there to, to sit with something that long and he said eventually he was moved to tears because the craving was actually taking him from something that was trying to arise in him so it was like a layer up on top of something and it was by acting on the craving he never got to the under the layer underneath it of the emotional significance of like you know, like the alcoholic might be drinking because he's stuffing something that he or she is stuffing something that might be um, really painful and not wanting to be felt. Um, so in an alchemy, we might call that the, the squeezing out of impurities of our being when we sit with stuff and we re remain the um, in the more, you can call it the puritanical state, you know, like the life of the ascetic, which I have done. Um, has a certain value in mind over matter, right? And um, and in improv theater, improvisational theater, you know, this this is good drama inside. But does one want to sit in that tension? Does one want to sit in that story? Does one want to feel what's coming up? And that's sort of what a lot of us are being asked for in today's world. So you know, to sit with a craving and not act, you know, it's um, it's worthy exploration. I know for me that. There are things, and here's my piece before the end on my video blog is um, my piece of transparency and vulnerability is I have a certain love of still of caffeine, and so there's see am I going to do coffee or yerba mate or puer black tea, you know, pu cooked puer that would be called, um, and lately it's been puer because the effects are noticeable and motivating and helpful in some ways so it's just sitting with that and that's one thing that you know when I sit with that and some days it just passes and goes by and other ones um, you know having some some pot and it's like well what's morning guy gonna say or what's the future guy gonna say or what's the girlfriend gonna say or what's this other part of me say um, and those are really two of my big ones um, I think flirtation could be one but I call that leaky sexual energy and um, and that's another one that's you know, just sitting with those events brings up really profound insights and I'm a bit more on the level of the hermit than than to go out so oftentimes I have to question like is this escapism and so the sitting with the escapist you know he doesn't want to go out by default and then I think that just by sitting with things we come to a greater place of choice so that's the value I think just the takeaway here I love takeaways you know simple takeaways is just the question of what is this craving and is there something maybe underneath it that I'm avoiding and just sitting with it and sometimes it's just we just find other ways to distract ourselves like oh for me it was like oh I'm gonna go to yoga or I'm gonna go meditate and if I would I could meditate things away by self-inquiry well who's thinking the thought right who's this and um, what am I and then it would just be this profound for years it was this profound sense of like just disappearing into the non-dual but even that uh, was a form of escapism. So the answer came with like embodying and collecting my humanity and breathing into those places. So um, that could be the gold in, in all this is just finding out the curiosity that's there. Really, am I avoiding? And is this um, something I do want to act on? And we come to that place where, yeah, I do, then not beating ourselves up afterwards either. This is Craig Lane with video blog week 40, how to sit with a craving and not act.